So I am the coordinator of secondary partnerships and pathways. And so really my job is to help students get excited about the what's next and knowing that the what's next is not always going to be the four-year pathway. Um, but even if it is, that we're approaching that intentionally. And so it's really just an opportunity to have students approach their post-secondary options intentionally, thoughtfully, um, and hopefully with some direction. So once they leave, they're making informed decisions. Everyone's thinking about creative ways to tackle the workforce gaps. And when we think about especially the gaps within the tech workforce, uh, the pipeline starts here. And so if we're not being intentional on how we're keeping kids engaged in that pipeline, then there's going to be a break in it. And like you said, if we're not capturing them early enough, they're going to get to college. And sometimes at that point, it's too late. Uh, so really, that's why I think businesses and industry partners are realizing now that secondary has to be part of that conversation and maybe even earlier into middle school. In a district that I worked in previously, they had a really strong cybersecurity program. And what I loved about that was that there was very diverse options in the pathway. And so a student could very well be employable post high school with their CompTIA certifications or some other certifications, but they could also go to that four-year path if that's what they wanted to do. And so when coming to Dublin, um, really saw that value in a diverse pathway. Uh, the CompTIA piece uh, came both from the previous district, but also replicating a program that Lakota had done. Uh, they had a really strong and successful program, uh, kind of with the same idea. And then the big part, and that we continue to do with business partners, is really have them help us articulate the curriculum. And so, because our teachers often aren't coming from the cyber industry to come teach, they're teachers who've been in education and now, you know, found a passion in this. So they're teaching. We, we need ideas about curriculum and what are they seeing? What are the trends? What should we be teaching? How do we best prepare our students so that they have that competitive advantage once they graduate to be successful in the industry? And really determining there are so many different credentials and paths, what's really going to be valuable to teach students at this point? So really listening to our business advisory um, members on content. It's that vertical articulation, if you will. There's long been a mindset that to be successful, you have to go the four-year path. And I think the four-year path is a great option for a lot of students, but it's not a great option for all students um, or not a great option at that moment for all students. And so really an understanding that in industries like cybersecurity, a student can leave high school, get a job, and maybe find an employer who's willing to pay for some additional post-secondary training or they can do post-secondary training through certifications or through a two-year associate's degree and then go on to a four-year later. But I think just that common knowledge that there's a lot of different opportunities and pathways within cyber and that there's not a one-size-fits-all. So the teacher is not a cyber security professional um, by trade. I am definitely not a cyber security professional by trade. And so when we have the opportunity to invite our business partners in to talk about pathways, that's what makes it the most credible conversation. And so students are going to listen to these individuals. I think this is part of why our program grow is because we had cybersecurity individuals and those who hire for cybersecurity jobs talk about the value and benefits. And so when we talk about pathways, um, you know, them saying, here's a realistic pathway. This is a good option. You should try this. You can do this. That's going to help the conversation and kids think about those, again, intentional approaches to what's next, um, even if it's not what they thought maybe sounded the most exciting, but it's still going to be a viable pathway career.
But I think one of my favorite examples is we had three students this summer, um, so summer 2022, who were able to participate in in an internship where they were paid and um, really not only gain some new experiences through certifications with the company, but also that really immersive learning environment. And so they did some great work. Uh, They actually went on to design the logo for the Ohio Tech Day. Um, But I think they were able then to transfer the the skills and the knowledge they've learned here in high school um, really into a real world setting. And to be able to do that and have that opportunity even before graduation is just going to give them that kind of extra lap um, to be prepared. I think it's extremely important and regardless of it's cyber or any other industry, these are, these are industry experts. Uh, for years in education, we've talked about content experts. And so the person who teaches English is a content expert in English and math and science and so on. And educators typically aren't experts in things like cybersecurity. And so if we want to give students the best preparation and the most opportunities for success, we really need to connect with and partner with our business partners, um, the industry professionals, because they're the ones living in the industry, working in the industry and know, you know, what it's going to take for a student to be successful. That's where some of, you know, the partnerships with uh, Columbus State. So Columbus State has like IT flexible internship program. And with that, a student goes in and um, does a semester of courses. And then their next semester, they're doing an internship Um, while they're, you know, having some of those classes. But then there are those articulation agreements. So it allows for students who want to continue down that four-year pathway they can, um, but they already have that foundation and have, have worked through that, through their course, through the internship, and really just feel probably more prepared and mature, really, at that point. So I think there are things, um, you know, but it, yeah, I think secondary, it's also an engagement piece, like trying to keep students engaged. Yeah. You know, education's looked the same really for the last 200 years. And so when you think about that, And then you think about this generation of, you know, it's very different in their approach and they're not just going to check the box because we've asked them to check the box. Um, How are we also engaging students? I think students want to be in an engaged environment where learning feels relevant. And and so they want to be able to connect their learning to what matters to them, whatever that is. And so I think it's an engagement piece. It's a relevant piece. Um, You know, also there's a lot of the activism and those kinds of things and how are they going to impact the world? And so there's a lot of global thinking for students these days. But I think it really comes down to um, they want to be engaged. They want to know that the class they're going to is going to mean something to them, you know, whatever their path is, whether it is work or whether it's a two year or four year degree. um, They just want that relevant experience. Um, Students want to intern. They want to go out. They want to be hands on learning. I think for businesses, I think some of the commonalities, regardless of what industry, it's like they want students and employees who are going to come willing to work. Uh, So attendance, um, but having a reflective outlook. And so a student who can think critically, but also be able to redirect. It's that ability to be agile and flexible and ready to learn, um, you know, that collaborative work environment. Uh, When those people are working together, how 
our students problem solving? How are they working with others? Uh, it's not so much like, can you type away on your cubicle, but how are you going to problem solve with the team, especially if you're working remotely? What does that look like? How do you connect with other individuals for the greater good? It's going to take a community effort. Like, I think, you know, we can have one, two, three schools in the region doing some great work, but until it becomes a mindset of many, uh, the workforce gap's going to remain. And I think as educators, we're starting to have the conversations. I think, though, just getting business on board, getting higher ed on board, you know, how are we really thinking about it's the pipeline and how are we making it a seamless pipeline and not just several different pipelines where kids are breaking off of the transitions. So I think that would be the last, you know, thing that I could just, it's, it's gotta be, you know, it takes a village kind of mindset. I think success is there is a very clear and efficient pipeline from cybersecurity in high school to post-secondary training, whatever that looks like, to the career. And we're all working together and knowing that there are a multitude of options to get students in that career path. I don't know that I ever would have thought of Ohio as being a tech central location. And I think if we want to continue to grow that, um, we need to grow that talent in-house as well. Uh, and that's at the end of the day, you want your, that's our return on investment. When you think about education, um, our return on investment is that we're growing students to give back to the community through their career and their pathways and passions. Unless you were a hardcore geek back in the 70s when I went to college, you had nothing to do with computers. And so I got an education degree uh, for social studies, and I eventually worked my way into working with teachers in technology. And about five years ago, we opened a new program here in Dublin called Emerald Campus. And so we have a number of different uh, programs here, but one of them back then they wanted me to head up was called Cisco Academy. Uh, and so that was, it was a focus on networking. And we soon discovered that kids did not know what Cisco was and wasn't sure what networking was. Uh, and this was after going me doing a lot of training on networking. Uh, but they were interested in this thing called cybersecurity. And so I did a bit of a rebrand of our academy and changed it after year two from <clears throat> Cisco Academy to Cyber Academy, hoping to broaden what we were studying. And so we get kids from our three different high schools here in uh, Dublin, and we actually have an agreement with Hilliard to, have, to get some of their students as well. Uh, you know, I was able to get this job because I have a tech uh, writer on my teaching license. And with some of the curriculum that we do, we I'm able to you know, delve into this, uh, uh, in, into the whole technical side. We still do focus some uh, on networking, uh, but we're broadening our, our reach. We're starting to, like this year, we started uh, kids training with uh, the security Plus, trying to get that uh, certification. We have some kids who are working on their A plus as well. So, um, so it's one of those things that's grown. You know, we took a real hit. Uh, we had grown our program up to uh, around forty students, and then COVID hit, and we weren't able to. Basically, the way we get students in here is that we go out to the schools. Uh, the individual high schools here and and do recruiting. And so that that uh, hurt a lot of our programs here. Um, last year, we were able to, I went from 
basically uh, six students to over 50 uh, because we were able to, um, what we did is we reworked how we did our um, classes and we put the first year of the cyber academy back into the high schools and that allowed for kids to come in uh, some of them as early as freshmen to get that first uh, peek at that try to get in there and um, so now what I have in my second year class is that I have a number of sophomores which is unusual for this kind of thing and so and these are kids who have decided this is what I want to do I want to follow you know some type of pathway into either networking security or something like that. I think COVID really made people realize uh, because along with a worldwide pandemic, there was a worldwide pandemic in cybercrime for one thing, you know, it was like everybody was working from home uh, is another thing. Kids see that, uh, you know, they have, you know, you don't have to go into an office to do this kind of job. And so I think there's some of that, but I think really where I've seen this is the number of kids who are into esports and gaming uh, see this as a, uh, they, you know, spend a good part of their time on their computer and they see this as a way to, uh, you know, advance that type of career. And so they, you know, they find out about things like, why is my, why is my computer lagging or something like that? And so they might, um, that might spark an interest. And, and quite honestly, a, a number of our kids, our parents, uh, their parents are in the field and they see this as, as a way to get into the field even earlier. just some, some skills that it's hard to give them in the classroom. So places like hack the box, try hack me, um, CTF learn, all of those, you know, give you a, a, a little virtual lab that you can play around on that, that gives you uh, an idea of like, well, this is what uh, a Cali box looks like and stuff like that. And some of these kids, I found out about these, from my students who said, hey, we should try this. And so uh, it takes a little bit of doing because there's, uh, as you can imagine, our, our uh, um, network is pretty locked down around here it being a high school. Uh, but uh, my tech department, our tech department has been very amenable to opening up things like this because I'll tell the tech, yeah, we're trying to do hack the box and they'll be like, oh yeah, I did that when I was in college and I learned more from that than I did my classes and, and stuff like that. And so, and so those things have been helpful, uh, getting them into something like that. Uh, there's another one called over the wire, which basically teaches kids how to use the command line, which, um, I think it's a skill that, uh, kids need to have. And yet it's hard to spend, uh, it's, uh, hard to give them, uh, the thing that's nice about these is it's gamified. And so it's kind of speaking their language. And so they understand, oh, if I want to get to the next level, I've got to find out what the password is to this level first. And so, and so it kind of teaches them how to basically do a lot of the skills that normally you'd have to just do over and over and over again until your fingers had that, um, you know, muscle memory that you know how to get onto the command line and and move around in it. And so I think that's one of the things. I think the other is to, uh, the other advice I would give kids is that, the, and I try to give the kids is like, whatever you think this field is going to be like is now, it's going to be way different when you graduate. You know, we talk about things like how, you know, how everything is exponential to what it is right now. And so there's going to be, uh, you know, more problems 
uh, as it were, and more money, you know, so it's going to be one of those things where you're going to be in short supply. And so people are going to start throwing money at you. So learn some stuff now kind of thing. I'm on a, a, a good uh, relationship with my students where we can joke around and stuff like that. But, you know, I've had some of my kids, uh, we've only been open five years and I had one student come back and not my most stellar student. And he's doing really well doing uh, networking. And he's now just, uh, he told me he just got his sec plus, And so he's getting into things like uh, security as well. One of the first things my students will do is set up a Discord server where they can all just hang when they're not in class. And they'll post questions or, hey, we're going to play this game this time. But it's, and so, you know, it, instead of let's all meet somewhere, it's like go to the Discord server, find out what we're doing or that kind of thing. Many educators probably feel woefully underqualified to teach this kind of stuff. And I'm here to tell you that you probably are because there's no way that, like I said before, you know, if, if I had known this stuff 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't be teaching. Uh, and the problem is there just aren't that many teachers who are into to teaching this stuff. And so one of the things that I had to do was to get training. Uh, and it seems like I'm, I'm in a continual state. Uh, it, it's interesting. I'm towards the end of my career and I probably have done um, more training, more schooling over the past five years than I have previous to that. Uh, it's just been a whole new way of thinking about my existence here. Uh, and keep at it. It's extremely important. Uh, but I think one of the things too, is don't be afraid that your students are going to know more than you do about something because it's probably going to happen. Um, and just learn to roll with that. One of the things I try to get my, my students to do is to teach me. And I was like, what? So I've got a kid who's a couple of kids who are putting together a, an internal uh, network from uh, basically computers that they Frankenstein together. Uh, we've had people donate old computers. And so they've created a small network. They've created some servers um, and they've used some of my equipment, but most of it's stuff that they've begged, borrowed or stolen, not stolen, but uh, at least appropriated. And, um, you know, some of the things that they're doing is above what I know how to do. And so you have to have that humility to say, hey, show me what you did there. Um, rather than try to be the guy who knows it all or the person who knows it all. <laughs>